Boba Fett the one man army with or without the armor? Let's talk about it. What's up, people? Welcome back to Black Geek Cool, where we're talking about chapter 14 of The Mandalorian, The Tragedy. If you haven't seen this episode, please go watch it before you check out this review. But I'm late on these reviews anyway, so you most likely have seen the episode. Uh, Also, if you could do me a big favor and hit that like button or hit the five stars if you're listening to the audio version. Really helps channel, really helps us get new listeners, boosts us up in the algorithm, and is a great way to show your support for the channel. Um, also, if you financially would like to support us, if you choose to do that, it's really cool. You can go check us out at uh, Cash App, donate there, dollar sign Black E Cool, or check our Patreon. Slash Blackie Cool or get some cool merch at Teespring slash Blackie Cool. That's a great way to also support us if you would like to and get yourself some cool stuff. I got stickers too. Let me know if you want a sticker. Uh, I think I have them. I got to find them. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> but like I said, this is going to be a spoiler review. So if you haven't seen this episode, pause this, go watch it and come back. So let's get into it. First off, we start off with, um, first, I forgot to say something on my last review of Chapter 13. That was my favorite episode of the whole season so far. This is a very good episode as well, but Chapter 13, The Jedi, favorite episode so far of the whole season. It was just amazing. But this episode is really good as well. It's probably going to be my second to third favorite episode. It's really good. We start off with Mando, you know, flying to this Jedi temple to put Grogu on there. Still hate the name. Not a good name. To see if they can summon another Jedi to be the trainer. Uh, Mando's still kind of amazed that the child's name is Grogu. So he says his name a couple times. And he does a little giggle. But they have this moment where he's like, look... Once we get this done and I get you to your people, we're going to have to go our separate ways. And I'm going to miss you. I I hope you understand. I have to do this because I was tasked to get you to your people. And that's my job. to Make sure you're safely with your people. You need to go with your people because you need to train and learn more Jedi stuff. I can't train you because you're too powerful. And he's basically explaining this to Grogu. And it's a moment for you to realize, oh, Mando actually cares for the child. He actually has an attachment to the child. Yes, it started out as a mission, but now it's become much more, which is really cool. Show the growth and development of these two characters. And, of course, tug at the heartstrings. That's what it's for. And it works. It's really good. It's a good moment. It's a beautiful moment. Um... He also, they also show Grogu using his power and stuff like that. And Grogu seems to understand or seems to acknowledge that, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. But they get to the Jedi Temple, um, to this planet. I forgot the name of the planet. You know, I don't know Star Wars planets. It's only one I know is Tatooine. That's the only planet I know. And I'm pretty sure this wasn't his Tatooine. But they get to the planet and he realized he can't land. Um, at the monument because it's too rocky. So he ends up taking the jetpack with him and the child. Super cool jetpacking. He gets him to the, um, there's a circle boulder. He puts Grogu on there. And of course he's like, hey, what I got to do now? I put you here, blah, blah, this. Eventually he hears a ship coming and he checks out on the ship. And for you Star Wars fans, you know whose ship this is. I didn't know when I was watching it, 100% which I was like, oh, whose ship is that? Who's following? I thought it was Moff Gideon because you know Moff Gideon put a tracker on it on the Razor Crest, but it wasn't. It was Boba Fett. But while he's checking it out, Grogu figures out how to, you know, use the force, kind of sends a beam up, and now there's kind of a force field around him. Mando's like, look, we got to go. There's people here. Let's go. 
and you know Grogu's doing his Jedi stuff. And only thing about Mando I hated in this episode, he didn't seem like normal Mando. He was doing stuff outside of his norm, which was really weird. I didn't like that. I don't know if that's a a weakness in writing or what. Are they're doing certain stuff to try to build other characters up, but he was doing stuff that didn't make sense for him to do. Like he tried to go through that force field multiple times. Like after the first time, but he did. Anyway, he goes down to try to buy time. He comes face to face with Boba Fett, which he doesn't know. Boba's like, I'm here for the armor. He's like, you got to peel this off my skin. He's like, not your armor, my dude. My armor. He's like, are you Mandalorian? He's like, look, I ain't taking no Kree. I ain't paying service to nobody. I'm just a man traveling through the galaxy um, like my father did before me. I found a little small detail. I guess Luke Skywalker said that phrase in one of the movies. So a little side stuff I found out. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn. But uh, he was like, whatever. I'm going to sh- What's What's stopping me from shooting you? He's like, well, I got a sharpshooter. And now we know. Uh, we find out that. Um, what is her name? I, for- I just blanked her name. Phoenix. I think it's Phoenix. Phoenix, the uh, mercenary that died in season one. We thought died in season one. Is with Boba Fett. Apparently, he repaired her and saved her in the desert, made her kind of cyborgish. She's like, look, you know I don't miss, so don't test me. She, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Um, I think her name is um, Ming Wing. Man, I'm, I'm butchering her name. Uh, she was really kind of cool in this episode. She had some cool moves. The shooting that she was doing when the uh, stormtroopers came was really good most of the time. Like, there's this move she jumped, dove, turned around and shot a guy before she fell. That was cool. The other stuff was, like, felt really YouTube action, if that makes sense to you. It, like, for for me, the action of this was, in this episode, wasn't the greatest. I'm not going to lie to you. It felt amateurly shot. It didn't have that like that um that the Jedi episode did and I don't know if it was cuz you know they were using lightsabers or whatnot but it didn't have that good stuff until Boba Fett was fighting when Boba Fett was fighting it felt more pristine uh I don't, I don't know if that makes sense to you guys but yeah on on another word of that Boba Fett's fighting him in without the armor, he was he was a beast, beast just taking dudes out, smashing those stormtroopers. Which the trope of stormtroopers being terrible shots. Why is the Empire still have these guys? I don't understand it. Why do you let all these guys? I guess he, good helps hard to find. I guess, but man, they're terrible. But Boba Fett was going through them. Like I said, one man army, no issues. Um, he was beasting, like knocking people. And I gotta give dude credit. I forget his name, the actor that plays him. He was he was doing his thing. It felt like he really could do that. The, his presence on screen felt like he could do that. So it made perfect sense. But even after he did all that, um, him and um, I I just blanked on her name again. <sighs> I forgot her name. Whatever. So, we're going to just call her Sharpshooter. <laughs> Phoenix. Okay, there we go. They were like, hey, look. We just want the armor. You give us the armor and we're good. No, no. Won't come after you no more. Um, and he's like, no, I can't do that. Blah, blah. This is Mandalorian armor. Eventually, Boba Fett gets the armor. After all the stormtroopers are fighting, I kind of take... Phoenix and Boba, I mean, Mando kind of captured a little bit or got them pinned. Uh, Boba comes with his armor and then he even wrecks even more shots. He's got, he's got his guns. He's shooting people. He's got these rocket, um, like laser knee pads that he used. 
crazy with the armor. The armor did fit a little snug on my man. So he put a little weight on, but I ain't mad at you, big boy. Hey, we all get a little chubby here and there. But he still was wrecking shop with the armor on. So eventually the stormtroopers tried to flank them, realized they couldn't, and they, you know, ran, of course. But Moff Gideon still had his dark stormtroopers that he'd been working on. He sent them down. They looked not the greatest on this. I'm not going to lie to you. They did not look the greatest on this. But they went down. They pretty much grabbed the child and went back up to Moff Gideon's ship. Um, Boba Fett tried to chase them. His ship, he was like, it's an Imperial Star Destroyer or whatever it is. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But he was like, I can't catch up to him. But he let him know that it was Moff Gideon. But I think Boba Fett already knew Moff Gideon was alive, was, um, alive by this time. Yeah, he learned that two episodes ago. But they also destroyed the Razor Crest. Like, they blew it up. Oh, my goodness. They blew it up. So, that was crazy. Like, ah, oh man. I hope y'all didn't have Razor Crest toys because it's gone. <laughs> they blew it up. So, they blew up all his, his gear. Um, he still has his um, jetpack. He put his jetpack down so it wasn't in the ship. Um he kind of went through the rubble and found the the spear made of um carbonite, not carbonite. Is it carbonite? It's not carbonite. Uh, whatever that are there are best car armor, yeah, best car. And but Boba Fett told him like, hey, if you give him my armor back, um, I will make sure the child is safe. And he, since Boba's got his armor, he's like, look. I do have my armor, so we really don't have to do anything with you anymore. But I told you, um, if I get my armor back, I'll make sure the child is safe. And until the child is safe in your possession again, I am in your debt. And I will help you get the child. And Phoenix is going to help as well. So Boba Fett keeps building his team, building his squad. He's, he's got he's got a couple. he got a Jedi. He's got... Uh, some Imperial soldiers. I think she's an Imperial soldier. A crazy bounty hunter dude. Um, you got Boba Fett. You got Phoenix. He's he's building a massive squad. He's got a, a marshal. Um, I guess Cara Dune is a marshal too. But she's an Imperial marshal. Whatever. But yeah. They're like, look, we're going to help you. So they end up getting on Boba Fett's ship. And, you know, going to... They realize they need... A way to get to the Empire. So they know they need. Um, uh, what is his name? Mayfield. I think it is. Yeah. Um, Bill Burr's character from season one. They're like he is an Empire uh, soldier. Who has information. So if they get to him. They can get information on where. Moff Gideon is. So they go to Cara Dune. To use her newfound you know employee of being on the Re new republic and try to like hey we need you to help us find him so we can break him out and she at first she was like no nah, i can't do that I'm, just, I'm trying to you know be this and he was like they got the child he was like she was like you know what enough said where are we going look let me get this on the computer so she was finding it real quick so after that happened and then we saw Moff Gideon talking to, I, I've just blanked on his name, Guru, or, uh, I hate this name, it's not really good, Gora, the child's name, the child, and he was like, hey, he was watching him kind of force choke some star troopers, and at first I was like, why is he just letting him do that? So I guess he was letting him tire himself out, which I didn't think about, but yeah, he's little and he doesn't have that much energy. And once he does that, Moff Gideon goes and talks to him like, so you are very powerful, blah, blah, this. And he shows him the dark saber. And then the child tries to touch a dark saber and Moff Gideon is like, no, no, you can put your eye out. And then he handcuffed him. <laughs> he, no, first he tased him. He tased him and then he handcuffed him with little baby handcuffs. <laughs> He was like, nah, you still, you, you small, but you super powerful. Cuff him. Cuff him up. And that's the end of the episode. So we have like 
two more episodes to go in the season two. Um, I was going to do a live watch for the last episode, but I'm probably not. Or maybe I will. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. Let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in, too. Also, let me know your thoughts on this episode. Like I said, it's a pretty good episode. really liked it a lot. The fighting was really good in some spots. Boba Fett, beast, beast. He's a beast. Um, Razor Crest exploding is just mind blowing. That uh, definitely a game changer. Didn't see that coming. I like that they surprised me with something that I wasn't expecting. Um, I mean, I wasn't expecting Boba Fett either. So two surprises, awesome. I wasn't expecting me to be such a badass. Two surprises that I liked. But let me know how you guys felt about it. Hit me up, Blacky Cool on Instagram, Twitter, or hit me up at Blacky Cool uh, Podcast at Gmail. Or hit me in the comments if you're listening to the YouTube version of this. But as always, guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for taking the time. Hit that share button. Tell everybody you know about this podcast or this audio or whatever this is at this moment. But thanks for listening, and I'll check you guys in the next one.